new year. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed this. Um, it's kind of a little bit different. We had planned to do this as a workshop in the shop uh, in the unit, but of course uh, that can't happen now uh, with the COVID thing. So basically I'm going to show, I've kind of adapted it for at home creation. Hope you're going to enjoy it. Um, so the idea is we're going to use any of these. I'm going to do a few of these different, a different kind of selection of these. So whatever you've got by way of um, tubs that once had sweets in, or shortbread in, or after eight mints, or whatever tins, tubs, whatever you've got, that's what we're going to use to plant up. Um, it's called a pote fleur so literally it's supposed to be um, foliage plants with fresh cut flowers uh, arranged however the way that I'm going to do it today is going to be a little bit of a combination of the two um, I hope you'll enjoy it anyway it's kind of good fun it's dead easy to do um, and it isn't going to take absolutely forever because it is quite chilly out here um, so first of all I'm going to start off with my oasis which I'm putting into like a little plastic um well it's kind of i've soaked it in warm water um in a plastic uh little tupperware -y type thing it was a yogurt pot so i've got that right in the middle and then what i'm going to do is arrange my plants around the outside so i'm kind of seeing it as like um a gift that keeps on giving there's loads of things that i'm going to include in here um that literally aren't going to show themselves for a little while so I'm specifically using tulips and hyacinths um, and I've got some ivy as well. Um, sort of simple little things, but things that are going to create a really lovely uh, sort of decorative arrangement to, I don't know, to kind of won't quite replace a Christmas tree, but it'll, it, it'll fill some spaces that you've got voids now. Um, so that's how we're beginning. So first off, what I'm going to do is plant around the outside edge of this some ivy and some tulip bulbs. So first off, I've got a few different varieties of ivy here. So I'm just going to pop them in around the edge. I've got a little bit of soil underneath to give me um, a sort of some uh, drainage um, and uh, a little bit of soil for these plants. So it's only a tiny bit. Um, I put in also uh, a little bit of broken crockery at the bottom, again, just for a little bit of drainage. And I'm being careful that my soil isn't going to go into the pot that has the oasis in it because that has to be a water holder. Um, bulb flowers, by definition, take quite a bit of, um, of water. So you sort of need to make sure that you can top this up with water on a daily basis. Um, then I've got some bulbs, I've got some tulip bulbs, which I'm going to kind of put in between my ivy. Um, I've got a few different colours here, they're a little bit mixed. It was just um, so that I've got a bit of colour once um, the, the flowers, the cut flowers have, have, have died and that's the kind of idea. But of course, because we put that in a separate container, you can pull that out and replace it with something else. So got all those plants in now and they've all got plenty of space and you can see me oasis in the middle and then I've got a little bit of moss you know moss is my favorite thing so moss is just going to go over the top and around um, so my idea is this is going to be as is my way because I kind of like little collections of things um, I'm going to do a few of these over a couple of days, um, all with different ingredients and um, pro probably almost everything will include ivy um, because it's such a hardy little plant and it's great at this time of the year. So ivy uh, represents fidelity and it kind of, uh, I find a, a poem that I, I read um, which was all about how ivy clings on and holds on and how somebody might hold on to the person that they love and um, it also uh, represents longevity because it can survive when everything around it is uh, kind of withering in the cold so there you go so dead dead simple so far and then my uh, hyacinths i've got some lovely hyacinths here 
a few different colours and I'm going to have these coming out of the middle. Um, I've also got myself a stick here. Now the stick could be a pencil, it could be absolutely anything. Um, so what I'm going to do is make a hole with my stick in the oasis and that these holes are going to be where the hyacinth goes in. So think about hyacinths and, and a lot of bulb flowers when you put them in oasis they kind of don't like it that much and as you're pushing them in the base of the stems get bruised so by making the hole you're stopping that. So first off what I'm going to do I'm going to cut them a little bit short so I'm just going to check if they've got babies lower down and this one does so I'm going to leave it quite long and literally then find the hole that I've made for it and push it in. bigger hole on this side and don't worry too much about if they are uh, moving around a little bit in the oasis because we're going to use uh, another little trick just to hold those all in place so this one doesn't have any babies in it so I'm just going to take the leaves off because they do make it a little bit harder I'm going to make it a little bit lower um, so when I'm saying about babies in it you see this one's got a baby down here Um, so, and this one does as well, but it's a little bit higher up. Oh. And this one doesn't. So I'm going to push her in there. And this one does, so we need a little bit of a bigger hole here. This is a really old fashioned technique and it's something that I was taught millions of years ago. Um, and I worry about some of these old techniques that they, uh, that they get lost. Um, so, hyacinth, really interesting. Um, sort of in the classics, the, the, the story of hyacinth is Hyacinthus um, was the love of Apollo, I think, I'm sure it's Apollo, and they were having this kind of discus uh, competition and Apollo threw the discus and it hit Hyacinthus in the head and as a result Hyacinthus died, it was kind of a fatal injury but he staggered around for a little while with his head hung low and that's why they say that a hyacinth um, kind of represents his head hanging and where his blood fell on the ground they say hyacinths grew and um, there's kind of loads of things about um, I'm just going to put these in the bin because actually it's very important to say that hyacinth stems and daffodil stems and things like that um, they contain latex which is really really super slippy um, so if you get any of this on the floor honestly it's a serious skid damage uh, limitation thing to put them all in the bin um, so do be careful I've got a bundle here of, uh, we call it gaggle and you get stuff like this growing in your garden or on walks and you just see it um, it's, it's a a really good little twig. Um, so um, I'm going to use it in between and amongst my. Uh, just as if I could just cut through it uh, in between my hyacinths. So it's just going to uh, give them a little bit of stability, give them something to kind of hold on to. Um, sometimes as well, when these are kind of quite dry, but when they rehydrate, you get. Uh, little leaves growing on them which again is quite an interesting so going back to the hyacinth so um, a purple hyacinth represents constancy um, I kind of uh, like that we need some constancy in our lives right now I think um, everything seems to be up in the air and we don't know from one day to the next what the situation is going to be so constancy can't be a bad thing at all um, 
I am going to tell you, oh yeah, purple, blue and purple. So constancy is one thing and um, then the other meaning of it is please forgive me. So I'm not quite sure if I'm asking for forgiveness of anybody, but uh, there we go. So I've got a bit of an explosion of twigs coming out of the middle of this, but it just sort of gives it a little bit of um, height. And like I say, somewhere for the uh, hyacinths to sort of grow between and amongst and it stops them from getting all flop, floppy. So, the hyacinths coming out of the centre. And then I'm going to use uh, a little bit of crop herb. I'm going to use some um, lovely rosemary. So the thing that's going to be really interesting about this is how it progresses. So it isn't necessarily what it looks like today, though I actually think it's going to look quite lovely. It's how it's going to look in a few days. Um, so I've got some uh, fresh rosemary here. Um, obviously rosemary is an evergreen. And uh, rosemary is said to be the herb of remembrance. Now, at first, and, and all the way through my training, I've always thought uh, that that meant to remember people who had passed. But actually, when I've kind of uh, done a bit more research, it turns out what it means is that its smell is very evocative and helps you remember things, like places you were, things you were doing, who you were doing them with. So not necessarily remembering somebody who's passed away, in Hamlet, it was said to be the herb of remembrance. Um, and I think in, in, in that um, setting, it was referring to remembering people that had passed. But it isn't that at all. Um, and it is such a, a beautiful smell, I love it. And actually, again, you could use absolutely anything out of your garden, you know. This, I'm just using rosemary because I have it. Um, a little bit more moss now around and there you have our first um, potty fleur. I'm going to uh, show you in a few days time when some of the things have opened but I hope you'll enjoy have a go and make something like this because it was so easy that um, and we're going to do it in a few different pots in a few different ways um, and hopefully it's something that um, you'll enjoy having a go at and, and literally I think it's taken 13 minutes that's nothing um, but it's going to give you loads and loads of pleasure not quite replacing the Christmas tree but still it's gorgeous take care bye bye